giving birth, giving birth, having a child, or being born himself, means you have a beginning and an end. When you're born, you will also die. And when you were born, which means you didn't exist at some point. And that takes away from Godhood itself, from divinity itself. So we never attribute those things to Allah. That's very simple. But that's when we talk about Allah Azza wa Jal. But doing this kind of shirk also has a psychological disease. A, we call, you can call it a disease of the heart, if you want to use spiritual terms, associated with it. And I want to bring that to light. What is the disease of the heart? Not the disease of the mind, but of the heart that is associated with saying that Allah has a son. What comes with that? Look, I'll give you a worldly example. Imagine that you got a job and the boss is really strict. But the manager under the boss is your cousin. And he likes you. Okay, so the boss is strict. But the manager is a cool guy. And he's your cousin. You hang out with him and he's good with you. Okay. So when you slack off at work, what are you hoping for? If, even if you get in trouble, who's going to come in the way? Your, your cousin is going to come in and say, look, look, this guy's with me. He's okay. He's okay. Even if the boss is strict, the manager will deal with it. I don't have to deal with it. But I'm really not talking about a manager or your cousin. I'm talking about why people do shirk. One of the core psychological reasons people do shirk. They figure Allah will, will exact justice. He, will, he created me. He gave me. He, I'm going to have to answer for the things He gave me. I don't know if I want to do that. But if He has a son or he has someone he loves, and I make sure I make them happy, I don't have to make him happy, I just have to make them happy, then what's gonna happen on the Day of Judgment? If he comes after me, who's gonna come in between? No, 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 no. I got these guys, they're with me, it's okay, let them slide, right? That is the, that is the psychology of shirk. Now, the previous ayah said, the one who everyone should turn to is as samad What does it mean? The one who everyone turns to? The one who everyone, part of the meaning, everyone turns to. And Allah is saying, if you, can, if you only should be turning to me, there's no need for you to give me a son and a daughter. There's no need for you to put anyone in between. Why did the mushrikun put idols in between? Why? Because they will make a good case before Allah. That's what they will do. Set someone up in between you and Allah. And by the way, even the Muslims who commit shirk, who go and worship graves, and you know, make dua to people that have passed away, why do they do that? Because they have haram businesses. They know they're doing really bad stuff. So they can't fess up to Allah. So what do they do? Let's set up someone in between. I'm going to donate like 50% of my liquor store earnings to this, uh, you know, to this grave over here, or, or this whatever temple. And then this guy, hopefully, will make a good case with me for me. You know, that's the psychology of shirk. So because Allah used the word as for him, there's no base left now. You can't turn to anyone other than Allah because he is as He's the absolute one to be turned to. And so, this is a logical con you know, uh, continuity. This removes from the people the need to attribute such things to Allah Azza wa Jal. So, now we come to the final ayah, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ now if he doesn't give birth yeah so flipping the argument around sometimes people tell you Allah is not on his throne even until now Muslims they'll be amongst us and they pray with us they say Allah is not on his throne now look how they make it sound respectful if you say Allah is on his throne you're physically limiting Allah you see this word it makes the Muslim guilty you're physically limiting Allah if you say he's on his throne don't physically limit Allah where do you get this term from, physically limiting? And, but they just make you ashamed. Don't say Allah is on His throne. If you say that, you're physically limiting Him. But what's the flip side of that? The flip side is that He's physically everywhere. And these people until now, they never answer the question, is He in the bathroom? They stay quiet. Is He in the church? They stay quiet. Is He in other places that you, you wouldn't be caught dead in these places? They, they're quiet. Is He in the bar? They're quiet. So, if you don't want to say he's on his throne, and by the way, Allah said he's on his throne. Six times in the Quran, he's on Rahman al Arsh istawa. He's on his throne. So if, you, if he's not on his throne, then the flip side of your argument is worse. He's everywhere. And that's why many Muslims historically have gone astray concerning this issue. And even wrote poetry saying, in, يعني, وَمَا الْكَلْبُ وَالْخِنْزِيرُ إِلَّا إِلَهُنَا And the, the dog and the pig is nothing but our, our God. How can a Muslim say that? Could possibly, could you believe a Muslim would say, the dog and the pig is our God? You, you wouldn't believe that, right? 
But they did. Why? Because it started off with this concept. Initially trying to respect Allah, but the flip side of it was worse than what they were trying to avoid in the beginning. Because now, the pig takes up space, the dog takes up space, and if God is in everything, then He's inside. Allah is far removed from that. Then He's inside this space. And they said even the monkey in the monastery is our God. One of them instead of saying Subhanallah, he said Subhani, Subhani. Because yeah. I'm God, God's in me. That's why a lot of these the deviant, these deviant groups, they respect and they treat people very nicely. Why? Not because of akhlaq, because God is in them. They believe that. They believe Allah is in you. So if I hit you, I'm hitting Him. So I have to be nice to you. That's why they're nice to people. So they got in more trouble by trying to avoid something simple. The flip side was worse here. Weak narrations fabricated, I mentioned that. Aqeedah issues. Fada'il amal, fada'il sabaqat. Wallahi, these are not the kutub of Ahl-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. They're not the kutub of Ahl-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. They are Ash'ari Aqeedah. Ash'ari Aqeedah. That's very, very dangerous and very serious issue. If the Aqeedah is bad, don't ask about your Salah and Siyam because everything else is going to be pretty much bad. The most important thing is our belief system is understanding La ilaha illallah. Part of understanding La ilaha illallah is understanding al asma wa sifat. In the books that they use, besides the fabricated weak narrations, my tablighi brothers, you also don't follow the aqeed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Which you have to learn from the reliable sources. And then of course division and hatred. They are very nice people, but generally speaking. Very nice, very kind, unless they see that you may be in opposition, in which case different colors will come. And I've experienced that myself. I was called Wahhabi, Albani, uh, terrorist. I killed innocent people. Why? Because I told them after the Salah that Allah is above the throne. Allah is above the throne. Big fitna in the masjid. Big fitna in the masjid. The, the kind brothers earlier became enemies. Why? Simply because we differed on issue of Aqeedah. He read Fadal Sadaqat, some boy said that Allah is on his right, Allah is on his left, Allah is behind. I said, I said well, akhi, let me understand this. What do you mean Allah is on his right, Allah is on his left? Are you suggesting Allah is everywhere? He said, yes. I said, Allah says, Aminum man fi samai a yaksifa bikumul arda fa ida hiya tamur. He said, huh? Then khalas, they realized that they're dealing with someone that they, they will not agree with them. The niceness went away. And then all kinds of names were used and everything. Say, brother, why you do this, man? Why you divide in the ummah? Leave alone this, this jama'ah. You want to give da'wah, Habibi? Give da'wah 24-7. Give da'wah whenever possible. I'm not telling you don't knock on people's doors and call him to salah. But before salah, call him to Allah. Call him to tawheed. Make sure. If he knew Allah, you think he would, he would leave alone salah? That's number one. So that idea is an innovation. Secondly, the book, Fada'il Amal, Fada'il Sadaqah, Tabligh al are book are not good. They have some good material, but the books are not authentic. I've read them with my own eyes, four eyes. Well, back then I only had two, before I started wearing glasses. The books have bad information. They teach you the wrong Aqeedah. They are Ash'ari in their Aqeedah. Sufi in their Madhab. According to Tariqa, Naqshbandiya, and whatever the list goes on. So the books which they use are not reliable. Number three, anyone gives a bayan. For six years he wasn't praying. They went to his house, gave him da'wah. The first day he comes to the masjid, the second day he's speaking to the people. The Prophet said, You don't know, ya akhi. You yourself rise. And you have to begin with tawheed. The first thing you should invite them to is the shahada of La ilaha illallah. They tell you Allah is the creator, Allah is the creator. We all know that. The kuffar knew that. Where is Tawheed al uluhiyah When their big sheikh, the one who authored some of their books, used to go at the gravesite of some of the dead people and wait for wahi and inspiration from dead people. Their, their big sheikh, I forgot his name now, the one who. Uh, Zakaria Idris, Zakaria, something, Elias, the one who invented Jama'at Tabdeer, then he used to sit at the grave and cover his head and wait to receive inspiration from a dead man in the grave. This is Shirk, yeah. This is the leader of the group. The Prophet asked a slave girl, where is Allah? And she pointed to that. 
Where is Allah? This is such a foolish question. This is an innovative, this is a bidditch. The Prophet asked a slave girl, where is Allah? And she pointed to that. In the 11th Jews, in Surah Yunus, in the beginning, Allah says, Inna Rabbakum Allahu ladhi khalaq as-samawati wal arda fi sittati ayyamin, thumma stawa ala al-arshi yudabbiru al-amr. After creating the heavens and earth in six days, Allah turned to the arsh, yudabbiru al-amr. Same thing Allah says in Surah Al-Rad in the 13th Jews in the beginning. إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْأَرْشِ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ Again the same. أَلْتُمْ لِذُنْيَانَكُمْ أَسَسًا مِنَ الْحَقِّ يَا أَبَطَّرَ وَمَا الَّذَنَ لِلَّهِ فِي دَرْبِهِ كَفَهُ الْمُهَيْمِنُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَرُّ then Allah says in Surah Taha in the 16th Jews, Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an alitashqa. Allah says, I haven't sent the Qur'an to, to humiliate you or to or, or whatever to impose upon you and to, to, to give you problems. Tanzeelam mimman khalaq al-arda wa samawat al-ula. Uh, this has been revealed from him who created the heavens and the earth and is high. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi istawa. Created the heavens and the earth and then turned to the Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi istawa. The most merciful upon the earth, upon the Arsh, then turned. Then Allah talks about it in the 21st new surah Alif Lam Mim Sajda. هو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش يدبر الأمر. Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days. Then. ये कहना अल्लाह सब जगह मौजूद है. ये इस्लाम की तालीम में नहीं है. ये हिंदू की तालीम में है. Yeah. So flipping the argument around. Sometimes people tell you Allah is not on His throne. Even until now, Muslims, they'll be amongst us. They pray with us. They say Allah is not on His throne. Now look how they make it sound. Respectful. If you say Allah is on his throne, you are physically limiting Allah. You see this word? It makes the Muslim guilty. You are physically limiting Allah if you say he's on his throne. Don't physically limit Allah. Where do you get this term from, physically limiting? And, but they just make you ashamed. Don't say Allah is on his throne. If you say that, you're physically limiting him. But what's the flip side of that? The flip side is that he's physically everywhere. And these people until now, they never answer the question, is he in the bathroom? They stay quiet. Is he in the church? They stay quiet. Is he in other places that you, won't, you wouldn't be caught dead in these places? They, they're quiet. Is he in the bar? They're quiet. So, if you don't want to say he's on his throne, and, and by the way, Allah said he's on his throne. Six times in the Quran. He's on Rahman al arsh istawa He's on his throne. So if, you, if he's not on his throne, then the flip side of your argument is worse. He's everywhere. And that's why many Muslims historically have gone astray concerning this issue. And even wrote poetry saying, in, يعني, وَمَا الْكَلْبُ وَالْخِنْزِيرُ إِلَّا إِلَهُنَا And the, the dog and the pig is nothing but our, our God. How can a Muslim say that? Could possibly, could you believe a Muslim would say, the dog and the pig is our God? You, you wouldn't believe that, right? But they did. Why? Because it started off with this concept. Initially trying to respect Allah, but the flip side of it was worse than what they were trying to avoid in the beginning. Because now, the pig takes up space, the dog takes up space, and if God is in everything, then he's inside, Allah is far removed from that, then he's inside this space. And they said, even the monk in the monastery is our God. One of them, instead of saying, SubhanAllah, he said, Subhani, Subhani. Because yeah. I'm God, God's in me. That's why a lot of these the deviant, this deviant groups, they respect and they treat people very nicely. Why? Not because of akhlaq, because God is in them. They believe that. They believe Allah is in you. So if I hit you, I'm hitting Him. So I have to be nice to you. That's why they're nice to people. So they got in more trouble by trying to avoid something simple. The flip side was worse here. <laughs>
أم أمنتم من في السماء أن يرسل عليكم حاصبا فستعلمون كيف نذير 